Father, how can my teachers be holy? Why do you want your teachers to be holy? Because we learn from them and we can also learn holiness from them. So my dear teachers, John Simon asks, how can you be saints? His reason is quite selfish because if you become saints, it will be easier for him to be a saint. When a lawyer makes a mistake, the mistake goes to jail. When the doctor makes a mistake, the mistake goes to the cemetery. But when the teacher in the Catholic school makes a mistake, the mistake goes to hell. And it is serious responsibility. So, John Simon, your teachers are examples of Christ for you. So, who is the teacher in the Catholic school? The teacher in the Catholic school is a teacher of Christ. When I say you're a teacher of Christ, it means that your authority comes from Christ. You were chosen by Christ, my dear teachers, and you were sent by Christ, and it is Christ who helps you to be good teachers. That the authority to teach does not come from our diplomas or from our certificates. The authority to teach does not come from the board exams. The authority to teach comes from the one teacher, and that one teacher is Christ. So you, my dear teachers, are teachers of Christ. Meaning to say, you, you are teachers who came from Christ. You are teachers who were sent by Christ. And it is your duty to keep on remembering that your first responsibility as teachers is not to teach. Your first responsibility as teachers is to be pupils, to be pupils of Christ. John Simon is your pupil, but John Simon and you and I are all pupils of Christ. When we forget our need to be taught, and we are just so concerned about the power of teaching, about the license to teach, then our pupils are at risk because we are all teachers of Christ and our authority comes from Him and we must never allow ourselves to be separated from Him. So your teacher is a teacher of Christ. Christ. But there is a second meaning. When I say you are teachers of Christ, I'm saying John Simon is Christ for us. Every pupil is Christ for us. Every student is Christ for us. So we are not only teachers of Christ in the sense that Christ sends us forth. We are also teachers of Christ in the sense that our pupils are Christ for us. And my dear teachers, believe me, if you want to go to heaven, you will go to heaven through our youth, through our children, through our pupils, because every pupil is Christ waiting to be taught. The Lord told us, the Lord told us, whatever you do to the least of your brothers and sisters, you do to, you, to me. And whatever we do to our pupils, we do to Christ. So we are teachers of Christ in the sense that we are all being asked to look for the face of Christ in every pupil, in every student entrusted to us. Because our road to heaven, our path to heaven is through our young people. The young people like John Simon and all our pupils entrusted to us are all images of Christ for us. They are Jesus. At the end of the school year, our pupils say to us, thank you, ma'am, thank you, sir. Maybe it is good to say to our pupils also, thank you, my dear students, thank you, my dear pupils, thank you, young people and children, because through you, I was able to see the face of Christ. Through you, I was able to teach Christ, because every young person is an image of Christ for us. So, John Simon represents Christ for us. He looks at us and he sees Christ. We look at him and we see Christ also. But the third meaning of teachers of Christ is we are teachers and our only lesson is Christ. 
So the first meaning, teachers of Christ, meaning to say we came from Christ and separated from Christ we are nothing. The second meaning, we are teachers of Christ because our pupils are Christ. We are teachers of our pupils and our pupils are Jesus for us. The third meaning, teachers of Christ, is some are teachers of physics, some are teachers of math, some are teachers of grammar, but all of us are teachers of Christ because our expertise in subject matter is Christ. When we teach physics, when we teach science, when we teach math, when we teach languages, we must make sure that Christ is there, that God is there, because language without God, math without God, science without God will be harmful for humanity. Anything that is detached from God becomes harmful. On the other hand, everything attached to God, no matter how painful, no matter how dark, no matter how difficult and heavy, becomes saving, becomes an opportunity of grace because our only lesson is Christ. My dear teachers, our young people are looking for Christ. Let us not disappoint them. Let us give them Christ. In the words of Mother Teresa, give them Jesus, only Jesus, always Jesus. Finally, my dear teachers, on behalf of your pupils, I say to you, nurture your gift, your mission to teach by prayer, especially through the Eucharist and through receiving Holy Communion. Our season has been characterized by virtual Masses. John Simon, you have live streaming Masses, you have attended yes. them, no? But that is incomplete because you are nurtured and nourished by the Lord by receiving the body of Christ into your body. So, my dear teachers, I hope you will set your heart on receiving the Lord in the Eucharist as the means to nurture, to nourish, to help you grow in your mission. The second is, I hope, dear teachers, you embrace the duty of praying at home. Praying at home, especially the family rosary. You have heard it said, the family that prays together stays together. A world at prayer is a world at peace. A good teacher is a praying teacher. The good teacher must study, but if the good teacher who is studying does not pray, then you detach yourself from the Lord. It is only a career. It is no longer a vocation. Can teachers become saints? Certainly. You can only become saints by putting much love into every lesson that you impart to our young people. My third advice to you, dear teachers, is the mark of a good teacher is you're able to multiply yourself. I hope you'll be able to inspire our young people to become future teachers, to become future evangelizers, to become future echoes of Christ, to become future teachers of Christ. John Simon wants to be a saint. And John Simon can be a saint if his teachers embrace the vocation to be saints. So John Simon, let us, let us close our eyes, let us pray for our teachers, and let us ask the Lord to bless them abundantly, to make them like Christ always. Lord, bless the teachers of John Simon and all the teachers all over the world. May they mirror the face of Jesus, our teacher. May they show us by their lives, by their example, that God is at work in this world. Lord, make all teachers saints so that all their pupils may become saints. Amen.